whoa, 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 whoa. Time out. Welcome, Pro Wrestling 225 family, to a new episode of Unleashed. I'm Spencer Hunt here at the Allen Blackheart Gym in Denham Springs, Louisiana, for part two of Vendetta. Before we get into the action, I want to thank our sponsors of Pro Wrestling 225. That includes Just John's, Lemoyne Oil, 301 Flooring, Alyssa School of Performance Arts, Restored Motions, Civil Design and Construction, and Suspense Games. We have an incredible episode for you tonight. If you recall, at Bayou Brawl in Homa, Michael White laid down the challenge to the vigilante, assuming that it's Wild Thing. So here tonight, on tonight's episode of Unleashed from Vendetta, we are going to hear from Wild Thing. Will he accept Michael White's challenge to a match July 29th at Endgame? Find out later on in tonight's episode. But to kick things off, we have some incredible singles action as the wicked, cold-blooded Wes Warren goes one-on-one -on -one with the ring wrecker, Bordell Walker. Let's get straight into the action and get unleashed. You know, they say lightning strikes once in one place. The lightning's gonna strike twice. Tonight, last week, I put Mustang Mike out of his misery. I did 225 a favor. I got rid of that old relic for good. And tonight, Bordell Walker, you're going to see exactly what Mustang Mike saw last week. I'm going to put you down and send you to the home with him. And I'm cold-blooded. And that's all you need to know. Scheduled for one fall. Oh. Oh no. I I know I know bad dude is this set to wrestle tonight. I guess the cook mob just does what they want in pro wrestling 225. Daddy's back. Braxton. Hey, wow, just what I thought. We're well, good. Welcome back. <laughs> Thank you. I have an invested interest in this match. <laughs> I thought we were going to have a match, but looks like we're going to hear from having this guy out here is just bad business. Bad business. You know, it writes itself. I oh, mean. It's real risk coming from them about being cowards like and attacking from behind. Where is Mitchell White tonight anyway? That's right. He's That's not exactly right. a boss that shows up to work. Nah. Right. 
that's right, that's right. You will never, ever, in a oh. two-two down win. Wait! We know this music. Michael White, boy, stop saying Mike to retire. Sounds like he's here to me. You ready to listen to this place explode, Braxton? Oh, oh my God, oh, sickening, sickening. How disrespectful can it get? I mean, it's one thing to pick on a man while he's here. But a man that you literally forced out of the company. I mean, the disrespect. Mocking Mustang, Mike. Oh, that was the boom, I guess. Yeah. Right. Right. What a joke. Michael White sinks war war every time we see him. Terrified. I mean, he's so, here with Mustang Michael. Now that we got that all out there, now that we got all of that crap out of the way, I gotta tell you, I'm glad if I was Mustang, I'd be glad because I feel stupid just wearing this kid up. Have you seen what you wrestle on? You can have your little size, Tammy. Guess what, Tammy? He's never coming back. He's done. It's over. Oh, uh-oh. Wait. About to do a wild night. We do this. We got a wild night thing. We do this. We got a real thought about the Bayou Club. He's here. Uh-oh. It's a wild thing. The man himself. We were about saying that. That's right. Yes, we do. It was at Bayou Grand when Michael White laid down the challenge for Wild Thing, assuming that Wild Thing was the vigilante, although we really still don't know. I mean, does Wild Thing look like he goes around dressing up and wearing masks and says, no, he, he really doesn't. I don't know why he would need to. He's perfectly fine with just coming out and punching him in the face as he is. Right, but we know that Michael White has laid the rules out over and over again. 
to try to win Pro Wrestling 225. A wild thing. Uh-oh. Like Michael White was trying to stop Wild Thing from getting a microphone, am I right? <laughs> it works. That's right, that's been the rules. I, I've got some, there was some bad news. And by you, bro, I know a lot of you are upset about. Mm -hmm. I am too. Mm -hmm. But look, but look. There was some really good news. Finally, what we have all been waiting for. Say what? No kidding. You think that's funny? Oh, you are a joke. Hey, hey, Denim Springs, we can read in Denim Springs, right? Yeah. When I count to three, I want everybody to read this song. Right? One, two, three. <laughs> Wild Thing continues to embarrass the general manager. I mean, he does a good job of embarrassing himself, but Wild Thing, you know, what making it that much worse. Is a contract, July 29th, right here in Denham Springs, Wild Thing versus Michael White. One of us has to go. One of them has to go. Please, sign it, Wild Thing. Here you go, Mr. Bennis. In the pen, in the pen, in the pen too. Come on. Let's, let's, get this, let's get this done. Right? I'm so glad. I am so glad that you brought this contract. I'm so glad that the office mailed this over here. I'm so glad that you signed it. Because let me tell you what you just signed. The business reading through the contract. Business trying to read through the contract. But Michael White signed it. That means it's official. I don't care because let me tell you what you just signed. Don't touch me. What you just signed was the end of Pro Wrestling 225 because I don't give a damn about you and I sure as hell don't give a damn about anybody here. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you what you just did. You have signed the end of Pro Wrestling 225 because I will make this company so profitable and I'll sell it. I'll sell it to anybody who wants to come by it. Well, you know what? Better yet, maybe I'll run it in the ground with these people who never have pro wrestling to do what ever again. I swear to God, I will take everything away. I'm in control. I run this, not you. And I know you're the little green guy, not him either. No, me. I make the rules around here. I do what is necessary. You're the hey, guy. I know you're the GM. And I know I'm not supposed to touch you, but if you spit on me one more time, I'm going to knock you to the third row. Yeah. <laughs> Dennis Riggs wants to see nothing more. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Hey, get your boy. Because look, I'm not even mad. I'm over it. I've had two years of being angry. Two years of being frustrated. I'm feeling like I let these people down. Because you have. But now...
cage match. Oh my God! How long has it been since we had a steel cage match in Pro Wrestling 225? You mean to tell me Michael White and Wild Bill had to be locked inside a cage where nobody, and I mean nobody, can come help Michael White? And Michael White, no strange to be locked in a cage, but July 29th, he's going to be locked in one again. Spencer, can you read for him? I don't know if he can read. You want me to read it? He never got translated in his English. Can I read it? <laughs> That's right. Look at this. Look at the stare down. Michael White and Wild Thing. They're going to be locked inside a steel cage. Oh, July 29th is the end of Pro Wrestling 225. It's the end of Wild Thing. It's the end of us. Let's hope. Wild thing. With the final word tonight at Vendetta, we're gonna see it, Braxton, finally. Will Wild thing be able to put the final stake in the heart of Michael White? It's been two long years, and July 29th, right back here at the LM Lockhart Gym, one of them has to go, Michael White, Wild thing. This is Pro Wrestling 225 himself. If anyone can save this company, it's Wild Thing. He's gonna try to do it inside a steel cage at Inside. We've got so much more to come here at Vendetta. But if you remember last week on Unleashed, we heard from Brett Ian Landry, the manager of the number one contender for the Pro Wrestling 225 Heavyweight Championship, Christian Blake. But now, Lazy Love is backstage with former women's champion, Cody King, with her response to Brett Ian Landry. Two two five, Lacey Love here, and I am here with former champion, Cody King. Cody, we sat down with Brett earlier today and he gave his input on how this is Christian's moment for the title. He also expressed his feelings on how you teamed up with Corey Constantine that you guys made it personal by um, taking out uh, Jordan Job with Cody's chair. I mean, well, you know, you guys' chair, let's put it that way. And um, also, you took out Christian with the exact same chair. I just want to stop you right there um, because, <laughs> you know what, that does sound like something Christian would say, just passing the blame onto other people. Um, but I believe it was him who sat in the middle of the ring, Indian style, and had a 20 minute long discussion about his life and his this and he had to bury a dog and this and nah, nah, nah. that sounds pretty personal to me okay this is politics this is wrestling this is what happens in wrestling and he made it personal he made himself the victim here i mean if you can't handle the ring then get out of it it's just how it works i'm tired of being blamed for everyone else's insecurities and everyone else's lackluster performance we're just doing what we do, and that's be the best. So if anybody made it personal, it's Christian Blake. Next time you address me, you can address me as the future women's champion, not the former women's champion.
Uh, I listen. <laughs> Talk about a thorn in your side. And he's ugly. To make matters worse. To make matters worse. Ah, I thought that the cold-blooded West Warren could not get any less popular. But then, just a week ago at Bayou Brawl, he defeated and therefore retired. He did uh, let's use that loose. I, I know, I know, but the record book shows a win for West Warren over Mustang Mike, who now is no longer a part of West Warren, you don't win a match clean if you're in the shower the whole time. Not receiving a very warm response from the Pro Wrestling 225 family here at Denham Springs. But Braxton, I have to ask you, Wes Warren now seemingly back in his most wicked ways, perhaps. How big of a challenge does he have tonight against Wardell Walker? Well, I'll say it like this. Wes Warren has a mountain to climb, and he didn't bring his hiking boots. He is going to get beat up. He is going to get thrown around. He is going to get his ass whooped. Oh. Mocking. Mocking Mustang. Mocking Mike Mustang. With the Mike. Yeah. Real classy. Real classy, Wes. You get it. Real proud of himself. Shave your beard, bro. <laughs> Clean it up a little. You look ridiculous. But if you wanted to ask somebody to shut up Wes Warren, I think maybe the best person to ask is the ring record. They could have asked me, but I guess Bordeaux will do. He'll do a better job. Beat him up more. <laughs> I'll just stretch him. Shit. <laughs> make his ankles touch his earlobes. I thought I was a little Stu Hart there for just, just for a, a moment. I actually trained Stu Hart. Yeah, I did. I did. Back when I was a young man. How old are you? <laughs> old enough to know better, but too dumb to care. <laughs> I was actually trained by a guy named L. Braxton, who actually trained Hulk Hogan, John Cena, you know, Stu Hart, all those. I actually trained Stu Hart, but L. Braxton, I was on the Larry Yeah, you know, I had a little bit of time. The Ring Wrecker. Cordell Walker is a guy that every time he steps into a ring, he makes it the best match on the card. And he is the real deal. A legend in the business. Absolutely. Fortnite Walker was a part of the original Ring of Honor, wrestling guys like Kevin Steen, El Generico, John Davis. Like, he is an absolute legend. It's a shame that a lot of people don't notice about him. I mean, I've been around the block, and I've learned a lot more about Bordell Walker than most people will ever learn their whole lives. And this guy, I mean, he's done it all. He's, he's seen it all. He's a, he's a few words, words, but when he speaks, people listen. People listen. Yes, they do. A Mustang Mike Chant breaking out at the LM Lockhart. Trying to rattle Wes Warren. If he's so angry and wicked, why is this bothering him? I don't think they're going to do it. We are underway. And Braxton, I know that we've got our big championship match between Corey Constantine and Christian Blake later on in the night. But this is one of those matches that you had everybody looking forward to coming into this one. Wes Warren reminds me of Nickelback. Nobody really likes him too much, but they're still going to keep playing him on the radio. 
as, you know, annoying as it is. Wes Warren, just like Nickelback. Just I will be, forever make that comparison. He is Thank pretty you. much Nickelback. A couple of former champions here in Pro Wrestling 225. Of course, Wes Warren, a former SEC champion, winning it in a ladder match that he was added to at the very end of the contest at Extreme Madness over a year ago. And if you look across the ring, it's Bordell Walker, a former Pro Wrestling 225 heavyweight champion. Yeah, man. And, <laughs> and Wes yeah, man. Warren, more than happy to try to make a name off of the ring record tonight. I mean, Bordell Walker was getting accolades in wrestling before Wes Warren was born. You're, no, you're absolutely right. That's just a fact. I mean, Wes Warren thinks he's good. He's going to find out how good he is tonight. While Wes Warren was picking his nose in the back earlier, Bordell Walker probably added five more stats to his name. And I don't know if that was the right call. Slapping Bordell Walker across the face. Definitely not. And now retreating like the coward that he is. Why in the world would you want to piss off Ordell Walker? Hey, Wes, I got this for you. There you go. That's for you, buddy. I hope we caught that on camera. I hope we did. You know, another comparison with Wes Warren and Nickelback, he kind of reminds me of uh, Chad Kroger. He doesn't look all that different. I don't Fun like Chad Kroger, Kroger any either because he dated Avril Lavigne. Or he was married to her or something. It just doesn't sit right with me. I'm going to have to talk to him about him. Well, and you're Avril Lavigne's favorite wrestler. Right? I am. That's a fact. Right. That's yeah. a fact. Check Twitter. And another slap to the face, and Bill Dow lets him have it. Yes, you love to see it. You love to see it. Hey. There you go. How about I love that. to see it. Beautiful. Do it again. Do it again. Can I do it? This is what we wanted to see here tonight at Vendetta. Oh, 100%. Brunel Walker went back and forth with Corey Constantine for the Pro Wrestling 225 Heavyweight Championship. And it was really because of Cody King that we never saw Brunel get a fair shot one-on-one -on -one against Constantine. So you know he's not thrilled when he steps into this 225 ring. He's sort of got that taste, that bad taste in his mouth. And, and Wes Warren, if he's not careful, he's going to be the receiving end. Well, it's a punishment. You see, tonight. Corey Constantine, Corey King, and Wes Warren are all cut from the same cloth of right. douchebaggery. So it, it's no surprise. Is that an official term? Yeah, it is now. It's in the Brax Dictionary. Brax fact number 647, I believe. <laughs> oh. Ooh. Ooh. This is trying to bounce off the ropes, but runs into a brick wall. Looked like West Warren was going to go to the outside again, but like my mother used to tell me, you either go in or you stay out. You can't keep doing both. Oh. West Warren trying to slither away again like the snake he is. But Bordell, oh. the veteran, that is. arm off, bro. That would be Here we go. And bringing that arm and shoulder oh. even further. Slipping that ball like a pancake, bro. Cause we don't do waffles over here. All pancakes tonight. All, so pan all pancakes. pancakes. All pancakes. Warren in a really tough position here. One of the things Bordell Walker is good at is manipulating the limbs of his opponents. Yes, he is. But Warren, too, is quite able to get back to his feet, which is highly unfortunate. It is. I might add it. It is. What you can't argue with that. <laughs> you just a couple of stiff forearms to the face. You can be as fancy of a wrestler as you want, do all these holds, but everyone's got a plan until they get punched in the mouth. Up and over. Mm -hmm. and Sending Warren back to the, the rally of Bordell Walker. They go from striking you in the face to a perfect Ricky Steamboat esque arm drag. Ricky Steamboat esque, absolutely. I love it. And again, Warren finds himself on the mat in a submission, but again, back to his feet. Ooh. Now, Wes Warren, watching him getting punched in the face. I love it. <laughs> Braxton, I, I know that Wes Warren is pretty intolerable, as he is, but what happens if he wins tonight against Bordell? 
you have to think we'll never hear the end of it. Uh, probably not, but I'll just kick him in the face and cut it. That's that's a good way to do it. I mean, it's actually like a good hobby for me to just beat up Wes Warren. I should get t-shirts made that say beat up Wes Warren. You really should. I think that's up. Bring it in, Bordell Walker the hard way. Oh, no, we've seen this before. Back to his feet. Bordell in trouble. Here we go. Oh! Into the buckle. That ain't going to feel good. Get him out the bucket. Come on. It's illegal. Yeah, five seconds, bro. The cold-blooded one attempting to pin Bordell now. And a kick out. <laughs> Bordell Walker, not a guy that's going to go down easy. Oh, ref, that's illegal. You should disqualify Wes Warren. Should probably do, I, I would, if I were the ref, I would disqualify him. He knows he has that count of five, and he's going to use every single second of it. I wish he like had a count of five to like get out of the building. Looks like he's trying to break the face yeah. of the ring wrecker. Oh, that will not vote well. Trust me. Ooh. The cover here. But again, the ring wrecker able to kick out. Now look, I don't do this often, but I will give it to Wes Warren right now. Right. He's in the ring wrestling. High praise. I mean, he's in the ring wrestling Bordell Walker right now. So I do just want to point out that Wes Warren was on a bit of a losing streak. He lost the SEC championship when he when he had it to Mustang Mike in the finals of the Mayor's Cup as he should that have. cruel summer. As he should and have. then he continued to lose the next two or three matches. And it looked like Warren was sort of losing grip, but... You know why he kept losing? Because he sucks. But at double jeopardy after losing to Jordan John in an attempt to regain that SEC championship, Wes Warren was joined by Lucha LaCora, and it's sort of been that sort of appearance of LaCora at his side that has shifted Warren back into maybe a more focused cold-blooded one. Some would say a more wicked cold-blooded Wes Warren. Warren attempting to, there he goes, whips Walker across into the other turnbuckle, but eats an elbow, turns around, and a forearm to the face, and Walker going up to the top. He's comfortable up there. Oh, oh, oh but he, Wes Warren pushes the official DJ Petrie into the ropes, knocking Bordell Walker off the top. That was, that was definitely intense. He knew what he was doing. Absolutely. Causing Bordell Walker to lose his balance. And now, oh, look at this. The foot across the floor is disrespectful. Get him off the room. Ah, uh, I mean, I, there are very few people I've seen treat Bordell Walker with this level of disrespect. Now, Wes gonna pay for it too. I mean, yeah, the more than Wes later, he will live to tell the tale. He ain't gonna live to tell the tale. I guarantee he ain't gonna live to tell the tale. Boom there, there you go. Boom that. How about them apples? How about them apples? How about them apples? Yeah. You banana looking freak. Warren joining Wardell Walker there on the outside. Not exactly trying to get him back in. Careful here. Oh, oh. Oh. Walker gets out of the way and a chop to the post for Warren. And now he he's going to take a shot for Wardell Walker. I, I don't know if you've heard this. I'm pretty sure you have. Wardell Walker, one of the hardest hitters. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Tell me if you've heard that one before. Nah, I mean, maybe once or twice. Oh, no. Now you can hear that one at the Circle K down the street. <laughs> Pat Cook shaking his head here at ringside. He's like, no, thank you. I want no part of that. It's like the Joker said, you get what you deserve. DJ Petrie a little lenient with his count, but Moore gets back into the ring. And again, using the ropes against the ring wrecker. Wes Warren is just as dirty as a hobo in Minneapolis, Minneapolis, Minnesota. How dirty is that, Braxton? <laughs> oh, brother. You don't want to know. 
And here we are, making it difficult on Bordell Walker to breathe and just relishing in this opportunity to jaw with the crowd, but the crowd firmly behind Bordell. Can he make it back to his feet? Look at this torque on the spine of Bordell now, bringing him to the mat. And, and Walker may be in trouble here. Wes Warren acting like a turtle without the shell, just holding it down. Come on, Bordell, get up and, you know, play him. If that arm falls one more time, it's over. No, still life in the ring record. Not the game. Uh-oh. Can he battle back to his feet? West Warren shaking like a wet dog here. Full of similes tonight. You know, I read a book. <laughs> Woodell back up to his feet. Ooh. Warren trying to hang on, but listen to that. The Pro Wrestling 225 family, a little bit of a boom every time Woodell gets a shot in. Off the ropes. Oh, and the aids of Mustang Mike and the Black Eyed Peas. I've always thought of those two together. I mean, same. You think Mustang Mike eats a lot of Black Eyed Peas? I, one has to assume. I would think. I don't like them. Tastes weird. New Year's? Did you, no. Even then? No. no. Yeah. No. I don't believe in New Year's. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah, it's not real. Ruin to the second rope. Bruno Walker able to get out of the way. <laughs> I'm just going to say it, Wes. I don't care that you broke your elbow just now. <laughs> I, you know what? I would have to guess he probably figured that part out. I think so. I think so. Both men down. Our official DJ Petrie has started his count up to th four now. Who is going to get to their feet first. And DJ, a ref not known for counting. He actually failed the third grade because he mm. couldn't count to 10. So I don't know how he got his referee license, but I guess he's worked on it because he's at eight. Well, listen, you know who else was in the third grade? Brandon Collins. Brandon Collins is still in the third grade. Oh, boy, that went for an end degree, but Westwood dunks it. And now into the ankle lock. I just cannot imagine Bordeaux Walker tapping out. Will it happen at the LM Rock Park Gym? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Come on, Vore. Screaming in pain, trying to get to the ropes. And Warren dragging him back every chance he gets. Don't let a little twit like West Warren Beach. There you go. Sends Warren into the middle toe buckle. But was the damage done to the ankle? Woodell able to get back to his feet. Warren back to his feet. You know, Vordell with the uh, the kanju symbols on the side of his tights, you know what that means? What's that, Braxton? Wes sucks. Got to, has he been wearing those specific symbols forever? Nah, he, or he got them special made for tonight. He got them specially made got for it. tonight. Because it's true. Hard to argue. He about to, uh, Vordell into the turnbuckle. He ran into a brick wall there, boy. Yep, saw it coming up from the second row. Oh, that rolling elbow from the middle was beautiful. I mean, just e -E -A, beautiful. Absolutely right. Showing some power now, but Roy awake of the eyes. Uh -huh. And a drop kick to the back. Uh, we've seen this before from Warren. Oh, stupid little splashy thing he does. He's so dumb. Climbing to the top rope. Bordell Walker in trouble. Oh! Draw kick from the top. But Bordell Walker still standing. He's going for the CBD, the cold blooded driver, but it ain't going to happen today. Back and forth they go. Uh oh. Uh oh, uh oh, can he do it? Oh, into the cover. Two, three, good guy. <laughs> yes. Ooh. 
love to see Wes Warren get beat. You love to see it. And you can hear the appreciation from the crowd here in Denham Springs. Wes Warren in his normal state looking up at the lights. Yeah, now Walker it. silencing the cold-blooded one here tonight. The Braxton, what a match. <laughs> No, Wes wrestled in the match. He sure did. But uh, Wardell beat him, so that's all you can ask for. It's always a good night when you see Wes Warren get beat. Always. I know because I've done it, you know, many a times. <laughs> what a match here at uh, Jetta. Love it. Uh, Walker. Rabbit. Walks into Denim Spring and gets the job done. That's what I'm talking about. Standing ovation for this man. He's doing God's work. Always a treat when we get the ring record in pro wrestling 225. And it's just that much better when he's able to take down someone the likes of Wes Warren. Bit of a stare down here. Oh, is he gonna show respect to us? No. He ain't got to do all that. How's Warren gonna respond here? I mean, we know Wardell Walker, as classy as it gets in the wrestling business, hope he fakes him out and punches him. Warren doesn't strike me as much of a handshake guy. Just as you expected. Surprise, surprise. And to the surprise of no one, Wes Warren, not a guy that handles losing very well. But, which is weird, because he does it a lot. Warren saying it's not over with yes. Wardell Walker. And you have to get much more over than that. I mean, I hear the bells, Jeez. Warren beside himself tonight. He has. That leaves me with two things on my bucket list that I've yet to accomplish. I was reading David Goggins' new book. Hey, Couple David Goggins, shout out. Familiar with David Goggins. Yeah. <laughs> but sometimes. Didn't have that on my bingo card, actually. Is yourself. And I'm guilty of that on many occasions. I've watched my friends, my peers, retire and quit from this business when the going got rough. I've met some of the up-and-coming talent that everybody put a rocket ship in their behind 
and pushed to the moon, but when the going got tough, they folded. For over 22 years, I have been the top and I have been below rock bottom, but I have not quit. And I've watched many of my friends well, I'm talking years, about. get hurt and walk away. But not on my watch. I adapted that mindset. I was like, you know, for now, you get kind of old. The knees don't feel as good as they used to. The back doesn't feel as good as they used to. But then I said, hey, man, drop a sack and toughen up. I will quit when I'm ready to. But before I go, there's one person I need to face. Now he's currently retired. But since I met him in 2008, in Harley Race's camp in Elder, Missouri, all I've heard was the best in the South is Vornell Walker, and the best in the South is this, under, this other individual that I'm about to name. Now, you've been on the show for a little while, and I know sitting at home going from an alpha male. Is he to talking a about? Is he? has to make you feel real good. I know he's not calling Steve out, but I think he is. What? Steve Anthony? The exclamation point, Steve Anthony. When they talk about best in the South, it's always Vodell Walker and Steve Anthony. And for a very long time, that has to sit right with me. Steve Anthony is not on my bingo card for tonight. And the sport finishes up. I need to know once and for all who the very best is. Oh man. We haven't seen Steve Anthony in Pro Wrestling 225 since November of 2019. It's been years. We haven't seen Steve Anthony in wrestling, period. Now, Steve in Anthony, years. This video will find its way to you. And the answer I'm looking for is yes. Because deep down inside, when I go to my grave, I'm not going to have any unfinished business. I'm not going to have any doubts. When my time is done, all my answers will be finalized, and I am going to end my career knowing that I'm better than you. <laughs> oh, call out of the century right here. Ladies and gentlemen, Wardell Walker laying down the challenge to Steve Anthony, ladies and gentlemen. If there were ever a match to be had in the Once South, that's all, it. We've wrestled all over, this, all over this country, but this is gonna be the last time. I wanna know, and I know you wanna know, I'm tired of having my name included with yours. Once and for all, when I'm done, Cornell Walker will be hands down, no question of a doubt, unequivocally the best in the South. Arguably a couple of the pillars of Southern Independent Wrestling and over John Saxon. My God. No, it's not on my bingo card for tonight. Chill, Braxton. Be sure to tune in next week when we have triple threat action as well as a battle royal to determine the number one contender for the SEC Championship. We will see you next week on Unleashed.